Question. You're making a roguelike game with the main combat being swords. How do you do it? I know this one. You, you design the sword and then you have the player attack with those sword animations. Is what I should have said. Welcome to another week of development on my roguelike game, Thorn. Now, to get me in the right mindset of development, like every unsuccessful indie game developer, I start every morning with deep contemplation and regret of the decisions I have made in choosing game development as a career path. This week I've been working on getting some weapons into the game. Now the game is mainly melee based so I spent a good portion of the week studying and being inspired by some of the finest martial art movies of the 21st century. So as discussed in the last devlog, we plan on having lots of weapons in the game. So I started this week off with a little brainstorming session on how I will handle the weapon system. What I ended up coming up with was that the weapons will be split into two parts, handle and blade. This way every handle can be used for every blade and every blade can be used for every handle. And I'll have slight variations of designs of the blades and the handles so that we can just slap two random pieces to become one with a little thing called faith. So I got to designing a handful of weapon blades and weapon handles and in the end I came up with 5 basic designs of each which should total to be around 25 variations, which for now will be more than enough. Every weapon will also have their own stats, rarity, value, damage, durability, thoughts, feelings, sadness, happiness. And if I hit the old randomizer on them then well I don't even need the other 25 designs. One weapon will be infinite as it is. But Garnet, isn't that cheating? So, after designing a couple weapons, I was onto my next rabbit hole. I wanted to create a tool that would generate weapons at the click of a button. So, my idea with this was to create the tool that would handle two lists. One for the handles and one for the blades. And by certain presets on these prefabs would determine how exactly these objects interact with each other. Now, I'm no stranger to Unity editor tools. Fooled around with her a bit in the past, so I was truly unprepared for the fight that she was about to put up. After many hours of trying to understand why I was getting error after error, it turns out creating a list of objects in a custom editor window isn't that easy. You basically have to simulate the objects through a mono behavior class, access this object through the custom editor window, create a serialized object from this mono behavior class, and well a lot, there's a lot, okay? So I finally managed to get the first list created, and I was honestly feeling pretty good with myself. Then I tried to make a second list, because well, I need blades and handles, right? To cut a long story short, because of the way that formatting works in editor tools, specific properties can overlap, which is what was happening here. So I was back to the drawing board and coding hell. Ah oh, sh**, here we go again. Now, I sat for a while and created my own algorithm for formatting the placement of the properties based on the number of elements in the list, but like every dog programmer, the answer was sitting right in front of me and I missed it. I finally got it sorted and it turned out I just had to learn how the editor GUI tools worked so I could manipulate the placement of the property based on the number of elements in the list. Now, from here I once again found myself straight away from the actual development of the game and instead started building a tool that will never see the light of day but was rather for my own amusement to visualize what I was developing. So, with this realization, I went for a walk with no intention of ever returning to the development of this game. Now it was during this walk though, that I thought about Randy, Rando, Big Rando 420, Randall, my favourite game developer, who has never created a game. 
Now the thought of big rando 420's failures and how my path was carving out in a similar direction gave me the motivation to continue. The next task in this system is to actually have the weapons generate and not look like, well, this. So my plan for this is that when I click this big magic button, one of the blades and one of the handles will generate onto the screen and be added together seamlessly. But of course, I haven't coded that just yet. So let's jump into it. Luckily this part was slightly easier and I got the system working pretty quickly. All I'm doing is literally just calling a random handle and adding a random blade to it. There is a thought that I have though, and that's with how the attacking animations and stuff are going to work. And that's because depending on the direction that the player attacks is going to determine the exact sprite that needs to be used. It could be simple enough in that I have variations of each blade and each handle in attacking poses, but for the time being the sword swings are just going to be me rotating the Z values of the weapons to line up with the player swings. However, with this approach it does look a little bit unnatural. Honestly, this kind of sounds like a future Garnet problem, but if you guys have suggestions on how I can tackle this, I'd love to hear what you come up with. Now, there was another task that I was going to try and get done for this devlog, but there was another issue that I ran into with the collision system for the weapons. Pretty much the way that the weapons are set up at the moment is that they have their own colliders and rigid bodies, so that the player is able to pick them up. However, because of this, they also have their own simulated physics, which means once they're picked up, if they're activated into the scene, they're not going to follow the player's movements or positions. So the team and I will have to look at some solutions to this in the upcoming few weeks. I am okay to leave it here though, I'm really happy that I managed to get the weapon system in place generating properly and with some of the art designs done as well, so I can knock off two more things in this current milestone. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, I actually had a lot of fun editing it in Premiere Pro which is a huge step up to what I was using previously. If you guys haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the latest devlogs and as always, leave comments down below on things that you want to see in the game. We're nearly through the initial project setup phases and we'll finally start to move into phase 3 of the project which will actually see a lot more gameplay elements which we're all super keen for. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.